Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm editing a photo in On One Photo Raw 2021. Let's be honest, that's a mouthful. I'm going to call it On One because I'm lazy and that's too much to say, I guess, but it's On One. It's a great product. If you've been here before, you know I'm looking for alternatives to Lightroom. I'm kind of done with Lightroom. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a fine product, but I've been looking around at other stuff. On One is one of the products I've been considering and thus I've been having a play with it. It is a great product. It does really like just about everything you would want to do to a photo, I think. So uh, I've been playing around, just testing images, all that kind of stuff. The stuff you usually do when you're trying out a product and I'm trying to get more fluent with it and familiar with it. And anyway, I was playing with a night photo because I love taking shots at night and I'm speaking about city shots. It's one of my favorite things. I've been doing that a lot here at home during uh, this COVID period. And I'm just looking for ways to explore editing options with these. So I'm in on one. Here's the photo. Now, this is not something I took recently or even here in Austin. If you can tell, this is from... Uh, the lovely city of London, but I'm going to start out with a crop. I had already previously decided on a 16 by 9. So I'm just going to drag that to remove a little bit of that foreground, and I'm going to hit apply, and then we're going to start editing. Okay, if you're not familiar with On One, you've got several tabs over here that you can edit on. Local adjustments come in super handy. I'm not going into that today. This is not a portrait. I'm skipping that. I will be starting in the Develop tab and then going to Effects. So in Develop, as you can see, you've got a few different things here. I'm going to spend my time in Tone and Color, which is really, this is basically the Develop panel that you may have in Lightroom if you're a Lightroom user. But you can see here the various tools, and I need to check my notes, but I'm doing about a 28 on Contrast. Highlights are coming down fairly uh, low, like a negative 40 to something like that. I'm gonna bump shadows just a tad. I don't want it to be too dark. It's a night shot, I wanna accentuate that, but um, I don't wanna make it over dark. You'll see some things that I do to it here in a minute. And then structure's going up in the mid 40s. This is gonna give it a little bit of crunch, which I kinda of like having in city shots because to me, all the texture in the buildings and the cobblestones and all that just kinda of cries out for, you know, hey, give me some, uh, give me some uh, bump, for lack of a better word. So, whoops, I bumped up whites. I meant to grab structure. So structure is going to 49, I think it was. There you go. That looks a little bit better. I was wondering why that photo was getting so bright. And then haze is coming down like a negative 30, 31. Just kind of making some basic edits. Let me show you the before and after. That's what I started with, and that's where I am. Very yellow. We're going to fix all that. I'm much more into blue. City uh, shots like this at night often have this kind of yellowy cast from these kind of lights. And I don't really like it. I like to have some yellow because I think it looks natural. But otherwise, I like to make the scene a bit more blue, which is what we're going to get into next. And the way I do that is staying here on this develop tab. I'm going to take this temperature and I go to about a negative 100. Now, again, the colors look bad now. We're going to work on that here in a moment when we get over on the effects tab. But as I was playing around, this is kind of where I landed as my you know starting point. And that's what I think of the develop tab is kind of like your you're setting up the exposure or the photo for your effects that you're gonna to add to it. So, you know, I think it's a logical flow. There are other things you can do down here like details and transform, but I think I'm in good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and click effects and this is where you add various filters in order to change the look of your photo. So I'm gonna click on add filter and surprisingly, I'm gonna go add HDR look. I say surprisingly because I already used structure on the previous tab. This gives it a nice little kick and I have to be honest, like I really like the HDR look filter. I use it on a lot of single exposures in on one and I like the results. Now, this is a little too much, so I'm gonna pull this compression down, which will reduce the impact of that, and maybe to about 70, and I'm gonna pull the detail down a bit as well. Whoops, I just keep going way too far. I'm gonna pull it down to like three or four, maybe something about like that, maybe four or five. So let me turn this off. There's the before, and there's the after. You will notice it also brightened the image just a little bit. Now it's time to have a play with color, so I'm gonna click on Add Filter, and I'm gonna go get Color Balance, which is really just a powerful and lovely tool that you can use here. It separates highlights, shadows, or excuse me, midtones and shadows, and gives you the ability to kind of mess around with the colors in each of them, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with highlights. Here my hue is gonna go at about 63 or so, and the amount is about a 50. So let me pull that up. And so if I turn this off, you can kind of see what I've done. There's the before, and there's the after. I've actually added back a little bit of that warmth to the brighter parts. I'm in the highlights, you can see the color that I've picked with the hue slider is right here. It's basically kind of yellow. That's okay, I think we're gonna balance it out quite well with the next couple of moves that we do. Midtones, the hue is going way over here to like 284, something about like that. And the amount is, it's gonna be pretty slight. I'm gonna do about a seven or eight, something like that. It's a little bit of blue in the midtones. So there's the before 
and the after for this tool. And now we need to get into shadows. And this is where I'm going to go in the blue as well. I'm going to get over here to about 240, which is pretty solidly, you know, uh, in the blue there. And the amount is how much of this blue do you want to add to the shadows. And as I start dragging this, you can see what's happening to the image. And I'm going to go all the way to about 50 or so. Now that's made the image really blue. And we're going to adjust a little bit of that as well here in a minute because it's getting really blue and saturated, but I like what it's done to a lot of the shadows. So there it is before, and there it is after. I'm, I'm not done, but I'm getting closer to where I want to be, and I think the blue tones overall, especially like uh, in some of the cobblestone and some of the sky, are getting there. The other cool thing about these sliders, uh, not just that you can adjust the amount and pick the color, but you have a brightness. So I'm not going to use it here, but if I wanted to make that blue a little brighter, I could just drag this to the right and kind of see what's happening. And if I go to the left, I can darken that sky a little bit and create a little bit more contrast in the image. So like I said, I'm going to hit reset. I'm not using the brightness slider here, but I wanted to point that out because it does come in really handy. And there are images where I might be adjusting uh, the blues like this, uh, you know, where it's going to hit the sky quite heavily and I want to bring down the exposure. So it's a good way to do it. It's just drag that brightness slider. Okay. Next up is what they call a sunshine filter. And you would think it's going to give you like a really warm glow everywhere, but it doesn't really do a lot of that. It's, um, I think it just creates a little bit more vibrant photo. So there it is with the sunshine filter. And when I turn it off, there it is without. So there, I mean, it's colorful, but compared to when I turn this on, which is now you can see it's a little bit more colorful, a little bit more vibrant, but also a little bit more contrast. So I like how that plays with a night shot. In this case, it's creating a little bit more contrast, you know, which is the dark and the light, right? The dark getting darker, the light getting a little bit brighter. So one more time, there it is before and after. I like that little bit of contrast. It also served to kind of darken the blues a little bit, which is uh, what I was talking about in that previous filter on color balance. So I'm getting kind of the mood that I want overall. I'm making the photo look like it's a little bit later at night than it was, and I'm getting rid of some of that really, what I, I consider orangey, yellow, kind of ugly look that often, uh, often occurs in skies and things like that in cities at night. So these steps are just things I'm working through on this photo to kind of get rid of that look and create the look that I want. Okay, another tool I'm going to add, add filter, and here I'm going to get the color enhancer. And here we go. I'm going to start with temperature and I'm actually going to go a little bit more blue. Believe it or not, I went as high as negative 40 and it is getting really blue, but this is basically like an HSL tool. So we're going to fix some of that blue here in a minute, but I kind of like what it's doing. Again, it's, it's just creating a little bit more mood for me, uh, more blue overall, but we're about to take that down a little bit. Speaking of taking down, I'm going to reduce the saturation uh, overall in the image because I don't want to overdo it and it is getting pretty intense. So about a negative 17 on saturation and I've got about a negative 10 or 11 that I'm going to do on vibrance. So that's toning that down a little bit, it's just reducing the impact of the color because I'm not trying to create an over the top, oh my God, look at this color kind of shot. I'm just trying to make it look the way I want it to look, which is blue and deeper, darker uh, nighttime look, but not overly saturated. And now I'm down here in color range. I'm going to click on the blue. I'm going to take that saturation down about a negative 24. So I'm just pulling back some of that. And I think that looks a little bit better. You can tell that it's night, obviously, but it's still got the blue cast to it, but it's just not as intense of a color. And then I'm going to pull the brightness down a little bit as well. And I'm going to go like a negative 45 or something. And all I'm doing is just darkening those blue areas. So similar to what I talked about back here on the color balance and the shadows. The blue is primarily in the darker parts of the image and I'm taking the saturation and the brightness down so it's not overly blue, but it's also not overly bright. So color enhancer overall, I started like that. Quite a powerfully colorful image and now a little bit more desaturated. To me, it looks a little bit more real. This other one looks like an HDR that I used to do uh, with everything being really bright and saturated. I didn't want to go for that look. I definitely want some color and I want some mood um, and I want it to be a little bit darker and I want to get rid of the yellow, which is I think what I've achieved with all these different moves with these color filters. And the last filter, I'm going to click add filter and that's tone enhancer. And this is really just a great, great tool. I use it on a lot of images because it gives you so much control. I'm going to start with the exposure slider and I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. So, you know, maybe like negative 0.2 or something and maybe a tiny bit of contrast. You know, you want to be careful of the contrast because, you know, unless you want to really pop the, uh, the bright part in the center, I don't want to do that. So I'm barely moving the contrast at all and moving the exposure just a tiny bit. Uh, and this is where I just recommend experimenting because, you know, 
season to taste, I guess, is really what I'm trying to say. Tone Enhancer can do a lot for you, but I basically darken the image just a tiny bit. So there it is before and after, just again, creating a little bit of mood and trying to refine the image to get it exactly how I wanted it to look. And having done that, I can close that uh, tool or filter, and I've used five filters plus what I used on the Develop tab, but let me show you what we started with because we made a huge difference in this photo. Here's the before orangey yellow, those skies that I just really don't like at all. Way too just warm for my taste. To me, there's something about a city at night with the lights on that to me, just mentally, it should be kind of blue. It should be cooler. I think because night to me is darkness and therefore darkness is kind of a cooler kind of feel to me. So photos like this taken at night in a city that are really warm, they just don't make sense to me mentally. Like, um, so that's why I'm always correcting them. And it's just something I like to do. So again, personal preference, if you like a warm city night, great, you know, have at it. You don't have to do this kind of stuff, but we were able to make a huge difference in the photo. And if I do the sliding window here, you can kind of see what we've done. I mean, I think we popped the detail quite a bit. If you look at just like the cobblestones and the brickwork and all that kind of stuff in the building, really popped those quite a bit. And some of that came from the structure slider as well as of course the HDR look. And then the other obvious thing is uh, the brightness levels have been adjusted and of course the colors and really the temperature is probably a better way of putting it. The temperature has been changed drastically. So there you go. If it's too blue or too dark, that's an easy fix. You can just come in and adjust accordingly in these tools. The point is you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of power. Using the develop tab in combination with some of these various effects, I think gives you a lot of control over your image overall in on one and I'm having fun with it. So I'm gonna keep going. There's more things I wanna talk about. There's really honestly so much you can do in on one. And I've had a lot of people ask me if I'll do more videos and I will. I like the product. As I said, I'm just exploring alternatives to Lightroom. This is high on the list. So I'm gonna keep diving in. If there's anything specific about on one you want me to address, I'm happy to add that to the list of things I'm looking at. So that's it for this one, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas, maybe some things to experiment with your own photos and Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Have fun editing out there. I'll see you next time and adios.